Welcome to the tutorial for the online pre-kindergarten application process. Once you have reached the correct website, you will either create an account or enter your existing account. If you need to create an account, you can use the bottom bar here to create a new account. Once you've clicked this, you will enter your full name, your email address, password, and phone number. Once you've entered those, you will sign up and it will generate an account for you. Once you have your account, you can enter your email address and password and click login. Once you've logged in, this is where it will house your application. In order to create a new application, you will click the bar that says Pre-K Student Application. Once you have clicked to open a new application, you can read the front page to find more information. Your child must turn four years old on or before September 1st. Once you have fully read the first page, you will click Acknowledge and Continue. Now you will begin the application. Student's legal name is the first section. This is important to put the student's legal name as it appears on the birth certificate that you plan to upload. You're gonna add your student's first, middle, and last name. You will then add their date of birth. Then you will click choose file in order to upload a file. It is important to make sure that you have scanned all of your documents prior to entering the application process and make sure those documents are either a picture file or a PDF. Once I have uploaded my file, I can choose the drop down arrow to identify which of the following I have uploaded. For example, I can say that I have uploaded the birth certificate and we'll say that I uploaded the birth certificate here. It's important, as I said before, to make sure that the file is a PDF um, or one of the following picture files. Once you're finished with the birth certificate section, you can move on to the student's registration grade and school year. You will use the drop down arrow to select the current school year that you are applying for which for next school year is 2024-2025. The next area is the student's physical address in Hartford County, which is where your student sleeps at night. In order to populate an address, you'll put in your address number, street name, and zip code. You will search for this address and then it will pop up below. Once you have identified the correct address, it will tell you which attendance area buildings your child will attend um, for this specific address. It's the following schools. As I move forward in my application, I will move to proof of residency. This is where I will add a current monthly utility bill. If you cannot provide a current monthly utility bill, a, you must provide two documents from the list below. You must provide one document from each column. Same as the previous indicator, I'm gonna click choose file and I'm going to upload the file that the indicator requires. Then I'm going to use my drop down arrow again to identify which document I've uploaded. As I move forward, I have a box that says pre K school building. Here it indicates that this application will be submitted to Deerfield Elementary School. And if accepted, this, this particular student would be eligible for HCPS bus transportation. This yellow bar is here because the address that I have added above 
is a school that currently has a pre-kindergarten program. If you were to pull, put in another address that did not have a pre-kindergarten program at their school, you will get a diff different option. In order to show you what this would look like, I'm gonna add in a different address. Once I have added a different address, I am going to scroll down. You would still do the same thing with uploading your utility bill to pr prove your residency. And now when I go to that pre-K school building, it tells you that the student does not live in an attendance area with a pre-K program building or an attendance area is unable to be determined. Um, please note that if the student is accepted to a building outside of their normal attendance area, they will not be eligible for HCPS bus transportation. So since this particular address is not affiliated with a home school that currently has a pre-kindergarten program, I have the option to choose a building that would best work for me and my child. So here I would indicate which school that I wanted this application to be uh, put into. As you're going to continue, you'll move on to students' race, ethnicity, language. You just indicate with checking the boxes which apply to you. You use the drop down arrow to choose primary language spoken at home. The following section is for previous school experience. Um, this question is, has the student been previously enrolled in public school system in a three or four year old program? If the answer is no, you can leave it checked no. If the answer is yes, you will have the option to add which school your child was attending and what the program uh, name or type. You will also indicate whether this is a Harford County public school program. The following indicator is special services. You will indicate whether your child receives any of the following special services. If your child does receive special services, you will indicate that here and you will add the corresponding documents. For example, if my child receives one of these services, I would click choose file. I would upload my file and I would indicate which of the following files I have uploaded. You will then move on to the following indicator, which is parent and legal guardian information. You will add your driver's license, MBA identification, or other legal form of ID, ensuring that it is a PDF or picture file. Once you've uploaded the file, you can choose which of the following you've uploaded. Then, since you've created an account, it will auto-populate what you have put as your name and other information into the boxes, and you can fill in any remaining boxes that you feel you need to. Um, if, your child, if your address is not the same as your child's, you'll have to unclick the box here that says same address as student and indicate what your address is. If you would like to add another parent or legal guardian, you can click add parent, another parent slash legal guardian and well, you will have the option to add another parent here. Once you have completed all of the sections, you will go down to the bottom bar and click complete and continue. At any point, if you feel you need to gather more documentation, you can always click save and continue later and it'll save your progress. 
Now I've hit complete and continue and it is letting me know that there is an error with one or more of my documents. So as I can see here, it pops up in yellow or in red, I'm sorry, where my error is. So here I just forgot to indicate which of the following documents I've uploaded and I'm going to click that and then now I can go and complete and continue. Now it moves me on to the home language survey. Double check to make sure that all of the following information is correct in what you've uploaded. And then you are going to indicate what language or languages did your student first speak? What language does your student use most often to speak? And what languages are spoken at home? If you need to click more than one option, you're gonna click the control button on your keyboard and then use your mouse to click more than one option. Once we've moved on to the pre-kindergarten eligibility income page, you will read the blue box here to identify what needs to be uploaded. Then you will put in your total annual income. You will identify the number of legal guardians listed on your income tax form. You will identify the number of children and other dependents listed on your income tax form. And then you will check all that apply with the boxes below. You may click multiple options if multiple options apply to you. Below, you will add your proof of income. Here, we're looking for federal income tax, your 1040, notarized letter of no income, medical assistance form, supplemental nutrition assistance, foster care documentation, Medicaid eligibility, temporary assistance for need families, DSS certification. The federal tax return needs to be the, of the most current year. And your other documents, if uploaded, needs to have a start slash effective date. Once you have clicked choose file, you'll have the option to upload one of the documents that you've indicated. Here, you will choose which document that you have uploaded. and you'll move on to physical residence. Click which applies to you. And you can continue. You'll move on to pre-kindergarten atten attendance policy. Here, you will read the full attendance policy to be up to date. And then by clicking sign in continue, you're assigning that you will adhere to, adhere to the attendance policy provided. Then you'll move on to pre-kindergarten transportation. Again, you will check all the information above to ensure that it is correct. Down, here you will read the information about pre-kindergarten transportation. For pickup, you will indicate if your child is, you will indicate if you are eligible, will your student be a bus rider? If the answer is yes, you will be required to input your address again. And if the answer is no, you will, have to indicate how your child will be transported. If you're ineligible for bus transportation, are you able to transport your child to and from school? And you will indicate yes or no. Once you have completed the following, you will click sign and continue. 
Now you will move back to the home page where you will see your document here, your application, and it says ready to submit because you have completed the full document. You'll click the drop down arrow. As you can see here, all of my boxes are checked, indicating that I have completed all of the sections of the pre kindergarten application. If you have not completed one of the sections, there will be a red X and you will be able to click and go back to that part of the application. You will click edit the form and you will be able, be able to acknowledge and continue. Then I will go back to the home page so you can see student is ready to submit. I'll click my drop down arrow. Once all of my documents are uploaded and I feel confident that I have everything needed in my application, all my boxes have green check marks, I will click submit packet. Here, I will again enter my email and padre password as I did when I logged in. This will also get provide information on next steps. Once I have completed that, I will click sign and submit packet. And once I've submitted the packet, you will receive a blue box here that says you have successfully completed the application packet. Once Hartford County Public Schools has reviewed your application for eligibility, you will receive correspondence from the school with next steps. Please note, if your child is accepted in the program, all necessary documentation must be provided in hard copy format directly to your school. Now, you have finished the application and you will await correspondence from Hartford County Public Schools. We hope that this tutorial was helpful uh, in the application process. If you are in need of any further application, application help, you may contact your child's home school or the school that you are um, attempting to apply. Thank you.